Budgeting. Every business sets objectives, which becomes a benchmark for their operations to achieve. They will have to plan to meet targets such as revenue, expenditure, capital, machinery, etc. Now, it will be nearly impossible to achieve the objectives and make meaningful progress without a plan. A budget can serve this purpose and make all this possible. So that is what we are going to talk about in this episode. So we'll quickly jump into the definition of a budget. Now, this is a spending plan based on income and expenditure. It is expressed in quantitative terms. That is, financial figures are assigned to the plan, making it very easy to implement and measure. It is also usually prepared for a year at the beginning of it. So budgets are prepared to look forward into the future. We'll move on to talk about the purposes of a budget. The first we'll talk about is planning. Planning process commences with a business taking a look into the future. Now, it urges a business to set objectives for a period, usually a year. For example, target for sales to be generated and then employ necessary steps to achieving it. Now, the steps could be ascertaining the amount of materials needed, labor hours to engage and indirect expenses to incur in order to produce to meet the target. This is crucial for the growth of the business since it bars management from relying on unplanned or unrealistic information. Second purpose is control. Here, the expectations of the budget are matched against actual performance. A variance exists, the causes are identified and remedial steps taken to prevent its recurrence. The variance could be that the budget was set on unrealistic terms and the actual outcome exposed it, or the budget modalities were okay, but its implementation were poor, leading to a deviation of the actual results. Control can be feedback where the budget is matched against actual results after the end of the program or during its implementation, necessary variances drawn and sorted out. Control can also be feed forward. Here, the budget is measured against anticipated results. Third purpose is communication. So with communication, the budget stands as a formal medium of interaction within the business. Managers of departments are assigned their target for the year. For example, the budget of the sales department communicates the quantity to be manufactured to the production department. Now, the objective of the business, the overall corporate goal, also is spelled out both the short and the long term to all that matter in the business. The fourth purpose is coordination. The budget allowed synergy for all objectives of the various departments and ensure they tie into the overall plan of the business. For example, the budget of the sales department will have to be coordinated with that of the production to manufacture the right quantity and quality to meet the sales budget. The accounting department will also have to unveil the requisite funds to ensure the production department meets their operations necessary to ensure that the products are available for the sales department to operate. Next is evaluation. With evaluation, the budget will serve as a target and it will facilitate proper assessment of actual performance. It will be easier to determine whether the performance of a responsibility center, that is a department, managers and their staff were in line or they deviated and for necessary actions to be taken. The next is delegation. With delegation, managers of departments will be better poised to assign responsibility to their subordinate when the budget is prepared. So the sales manager, for example, can set quotas for each of their staff based on the sales budget presented to the department. The next is authorization. The budget, when finalized, serves as an authorization for transactions to commence. Managers will now have the full confidence to enter into purchase and sales transactions, hire and fire staff, or embark on marketing campaign, all because it is contained in the budget. Last but not the least, budget serves as a motivation. With budget, targets are set for managers to aim for. This maps out a path urging them to strive to achieve especially when the budget is prepared with their involvement. 
Let's quickly move to the behavioral aspect of budgeting. Individuals react to budgeting process differently. People might be encouraged or demoralized towards its achievement. Behavioral problems are often linked to managerial styles, dysfunctional behavior on the part of the implementers, or the budget reasonability. Let's now look at a system of budgeting that affects behaviors. The first is expectation budget. Now, this is when the budget is prepared with variables or estimates within the usual achievable limit of the implementers. The usual limits are derived from prior performance of the implementers. The problem with this type is that it normally does not challenge the staff to improve on their performance. Their past performance keeps being repeated year on year. The next is the aspirational budget. Here, the budget is prepared above the usual achievable limits of the manager or the staff, but not at a level which is unrealistic for achievement. Okay, so this typically stretches the staff a bit, which will lead to improvement in performances. The last is a difficult budget. This is when the budget is set too high, that is beyond achievable levels. So it is normally set based on unrealistic or unreasonable parameters. So this has the high likelihood of demotivating the staff in attempting to achieve the target because they see it as impossible to chalk. Now, to obtain the right behavior from managers towards the implementation of the budget, it must seek to motivate them. Let's look at factors that can yield to motivation. The first is the level of participation in the budget preparation. The more the managers or their staffs are involved in the preparation, the more motivated they are. The vice versa is true. They are more likely to own the budget because of their involvement and will be prepared to work towards its achievement. The second factor is how realistic the budget is. If the budget is set far beyond the capacity of the manager, it will be demotivating for their achievement. The last is if managers will be rewarded for their performance, they are likely to be motivated. So people normally feel demotivated when their efforts go unrecognized. The reward can be in many ways, such as a promotion, an increment in salary, or an annual bonus, recognition in the form of a citation. Okay. Let's look at conflicting objectives in relation to budget preparation. Now, managers usually prepare budgets for their unit or department, which will serve as their target to implement. Now, there are issues that will arise if their budget process is not well managed. The first of it is individualism. The managers might prepare the budget to suit their needs. The budget might not be congruent with the goal of the entity and can lead to poor coordination. The second is short-termism. So here, the budget will be set on targets suitable for the short term but detrimental to the future. Example, managers will cut discretionary expenditures such as research and development in an attempt to achieve profits within a year. Now, this will unfortunately erode the firm's long-term competencies a stance to derive from the research and development which was cut off. Budget approaches. The first is the top-down budgeting process. Here, senior managers set the parameters for the budget for the coming period. The set parameters will then be presented to the unit for their budget to be developed or prepared in detail. The pros of this approach is that the overall goal of the business is planned for instead of serving the needs of the individual department. It will also ensure all departments' budgets align with that of the business. That's a proper coordination. Secondly, since a single body, that is the senior management, outlines the objective, it is likely to take less time to put together. The demerit of this is that the budget's objectives are prepared by managers not directly involved in its operation. Hence, it stands the chance of not addressing the department needs or not being realistic. Secondly, the managers and their staffs are more likely to be demotivated in implementing this budget style because they are less involved. The second approach is bottom up. So with this style, the process begins by having each department identify its objectives and intended programs. A budget is drawn to cover 
the revenue and cost associated with the program. After the individual budgets are prepared, they will be consolidated and submitted to senior management for review and approval, which will now serve as the master budget for the entire organization. The merit of this approach is that the budget is more likely to be accurate and realistic since it is developed by the very people who are supposed to be implementing it. There will also be a sense of ownership which will boost motivation to achieve the target. The cons of this is that it is likely to lead to individualism which is a conflict of the budgeting process where individual departments are going to prepare the budget to suit their individual interest caring less about its adverse effect on the corporate one. Secondly, since there are more people involved in the budgeting process, it is more likely to be time consuming. Let's look at the type of budgets we have. The first we'll be discussing is zero based budgeting. So with this type of budget, it is prepared from scratch instead of being built upon a prior one. Yeah, every budget is developed as if it is the first time. This budget is drawn to the needs of a department. So all projects are ranked and resources are located based on their viability and justification. So in theory, this drives managers to constantly look at their activities with fresh eyes, being free from prior years assumptions and budget targets. This type of budgeting is appropriate for businesses whose activities totally differ from each other or they plan on embarking a totally new project. Second budget we are going to discuss is incremental. Here, the budget is prepared based on the estimates and actual outcomes of previous ones. It is estimated by adopting the immediate prior year's budget and adjusting it with factors relevant for the current period. The adjusting factor can be the inflation rates across the board of the organization. In other situations, the most appropriate adjusting factor will be identified and applied in a budget area. This budget type is useful for businesses whose operations do not change significantly year on year. A third budget is activity-based. This method of budgeting identifies activities to their operations that incurs cost and then prepare the budget to cover it. The activities can be sales, marketing, capital, etc. The activity-based budgeting process is broken down into three steps. First, to identify relevant activities to the operations of the business. Identify the cost drivers, which are the factors influencing the costs being incurred. The activity level is now to be determined. Then the activity level is usually the number of units produced by each activity. This number will form the foundation of the computation. Then lastly, the cost per unit of each of the activity level is multiplied to achieve the total cost. Let's talk about the nature of budgeting. The first is the fixed budget. With a fixed budget, when computed, is not amended for the entire period, even when there is an information of a change in situations. Now, it is prepared based on a single activity level, say a sales unit or material or labor. This is problematic because Comparison will be done on on equal grounds when the budget is prepared based on 20,000 activity level and the actual outcome is 30,000. The comparison will be done on different activity level, making control difficult. The second budget is flexible budget. Now with this type of budget, each time there's a change in activity level, the budget is updated to capture that as implementation progresses. So if the beginning of the budget process the activity level is 20,000 for sales, upon which every other budget was prepared for. In the course of the period, if it moves to 30,000, a new budget will be prepared based on the new activity level. It ensures better control because the activity level in the budget and that of the actual outcome are the same. The next we'll talk about is the flex budget. This kind of budget is updated to reflect the activity level in the actual outcome to ensure a meaningful control process. This is different from the flexible in that you have to wait till the end of the year, then the activity level is picked. So if the budget was prepared based on say 50,000 units of sales upon which material 
labor and overheads were estimated and the actual outcome turns out to be 70,000. The initial budget will be updated to the 70,000 units and then prepare all other relevant budgets. The last one is the ruling budget. Here, the budget is updated regularly when an earlier session expires. So if the budget is prepared for a year, broken down into four quarters, quarter one to four. The moment quarter one expires, the fifth quarter will be updated based on the outcomes of quarter one. 